having a heart for for kids and having a heart as a teacher and wanting to see kids and players and athletes and students do well as they can um, I'm very sensitive to how we teach them and how we reach them to you know perform at their very highest level and succeed also in their highest level in the classrooms I know sports psychology has its, its plus sides and helps athletes and I know regular psychology can help you know students perform better in the classroom but at what point does it occur to the student or the athlete that says you know what I need something more concrete I need to sink my teeth into something that has more substance that's actually going to help me create change in the classroom or on the ball field let me share with you a couple of the buzz phrases from some of the most popular baseball, softball, you know, mental toughness gurus that are out there. Here's some, here's some phrases, and just notice the vagueness um, of these comments, and see if this, this is some kind of substance we can actually sink our teeth into that's going to help our players perform better. Okay, here they are. Um, we need more mental toughness. You need to have confidence. Go out there and compete. Help your team win. Release. Regroup. Let it go. Be control of yourself to control your performance. Trust myself. Trust my ability. Trust what I can do at practice to bring to the game. Pitch by pitch. Battle this pitch. Control my emotions. Control my heart rate. Keep it simple. Hitting is controlled violence. Hitting is controlled intensity. Alleviate nervousness and develop a routine. The batting average is poison. Let the results take care of themselves. You'll fail more than you'll succeed. Okay, so let me draw this comparison to sports and to something that we really value as a culture, which is our education. Okay, in comparing sports and our athleticism to education, what if we told our students who come home from school with a report card showing C's, D's, and F's failing? Would we tell our students, you know what, hey, that's okay, you're going to fail more than you succeed? Would you tell that student, you know, let the results take care of themselves. Hey, your, your, your grade average, don't worry about it. It's poison. This is going to help you take tests better, okay? Just go in there, and next time you go to the classroom, and just control your emotions. Control your heart rate. Battle this question, question by question. Trust what you did on your homework and practiced. Trust your ability. Trust yourself. You know what? Wait a minute. When you get stuck, just release and regroup and then let it go. Compete. Have confidence when you're taking a test. And don't forget, be mentally tough while you're answering those questions. I think if anyone is listening to this logically, you're going to look at this, your student and say, this is this is absurd. You cannot go into your classroom, be mentally tough and have confidence if you did not prepare correctly. When it's test time for our kids or our students in school, it could be English class. They have to understand how do I structure a paragraph. If it's history class, they have to know how to organize the dates. All right. If it's if it's science class, I gotta understand. What does this terminology mean? Okay, I can't just go in there and have some vague answers and be confident and just, you know, um, let my results be the results. What our players have to, to go off of to, to see a true model uh, for the game of baseball or softball because it's unlike anything else in this regards. Most sports... Um, 
for football, if we're on a football field together, you have to hit that other football player. If we're on a soccer field, I kick you the soccer ball, you got to stop it or kick it or do something with it. I pass you the basketball, same thing. Uh, you got to you know, shoot or pass it. If I'm on a tennis court with you, I hit you the ball, you must hit it back. Baseball, softball, this is the only rare sport where the count is 3-0. and And as a hitter, I don't need to do anything. The count is 0-0. And, and I don't need to do anything at all. So a lot of times there's reluctance that sets in and doubt and apprehensiveness. And there's fear of an anxiety of failing. There, this is why it's so critical that we have the, the best athletes to look at, they do something special. And I'm telling you the truth. There is a technique and there is a formula. The best athletes do most of the time just subconsciously. And they just they have it in, in, in their interior of the brains. We are blessed to show you there's two main video series we have out now, the best hitting drill ever and the world's greatest hitting formula. It's inside these video series. I don't give you vague general answers of how to correct, you know, your hitters. It is specific, detailed designs that the best hitters already do. And I'm teaching you something that they do naturally by a knack. We can teach you step by step, process by process. Our players, our athletes, if they have a goal and they want to achieve this high level goal, their clock is ticking. The sooner the better. It could be ages 8, 9, 10 years old. That's how they, they, they can understand and bring practical application to, to these principles. If you're in college, if you're in pro baseball, you can still you still have enough time to make practical applications and make this work for you almost instantly thank you for staying with me I'm almost finished with this video let me give you an example of what I'm talking about where is your mind while you're playing the game okay here's a drill that to, to, to sort of distinguish and, and show you that the mental side is almost a wash out the moment you are in the batter's box in a real game okay Here's a drill I've done with some players. We, we, we have a pitcher, we have a hitter, and then we have players standing behind a cage saying the word now. What I do is this. I ask the hitter, when they, they begin to see the pitcher start moving, this is, this is practice. When they begin to see the pitcher start moving into their delivery, I want you to close your eyes and begin the process like you're about to, you're about to hit the ball. Then, somewhere in the delivery, when the players know the common denominator, I ask, ask those players to yell out the word, NOW! And at that point, I ask the hitter to open his or her eyes up and hit the ball. So, what they learn from this is this. And many players, when they learn the common denominator, and they're, they're, they're learning how to say it and recognize it visually first and tell the tail of their teammate to open out their eyes and start swinging, what is in their minds at the moment when they hear the word now is one thought. And I bet you can figure it out. Where's the ball? Where's the ball? And this is probably the most basic and most genuine feeling that our hitters are dealing with in the game is 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 identical to what we're 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 recreating in this drill. They tell me where is the ball, and plus there's other factors that go inside of this that I explained to you on the world's greatest hitting formula, and uh, there's there's details, things that you know the, the sports psychologist would tell us how to control the body. We need to control our emotions. I give you a specific specific details on how to control not only just your body but to control the bat and learn how to control the ball with your vision you're gonna love it your clock is ticking lord bless you i'm getting